We've been on 10 barrel picks over the past two and a half years, and we brought the camera along for seven of those. We've been to Four Roses, Knob Creek, Buffalo Trace, Woodford Reserve, 1792, and Wild Turkey to do picks. That's right. Who else offers them? Uh, the likes of Maker's Mark, Old Forester, Willet, uh, Heaven Hill. Heaven Hill, thank you, among <laughs> others. And even new places like New Riff, who just started selling their first bourbon like a month ago, is already doing single barrel programs. So each of these places has their pluses and minuses when it comes to doing picks, and our patrons have been asking a lot about what it's like to go on these. So that's what we're gonna be talking about on this episode of It's Bourbon Night. barrel pick, a private selection, a single barrel pick, a store pick, etc. Yeah, it can go by many names, but it all means the same thing. It is a special edition, if you will, of a brand that is typically on the shelf, but it is a single barrel pick of that brand. So whereas, you know, Buffalo Trace, mm -hmm. right? Not normally a single barrel. Sure, it's normally batched. Right, but if you see one on the shelf with a sticker, it's a single barrel. Someone picked that. Right. So it's like a little snowflake. It's one of a kind. You're not going to get that again. Yeah, exactly. Which is what's cool about barrel picks. Just because it's a pick doesn't mean it's automatically good. Mm -hmm. It all has to do with who picked it and what they're going for. So how can you tell if it's a store pick? Well, like this Buffalo Trace, there's a sticker right here. Mm -hmm. Four roses. Same deal. A sticker. sticker. Some will have it just on the neck, which is a little, a little bit sneakier. Others will have like a little placard on there, like the Knob Creeks. Right. So what does it cost to go on a barrel pick? Well, I mean, that really just depends on what kind of bottle you're picking. Mm -hmm. Like, for example, say you're picking a Buffalo Trace barrel. Buffalo Trace normally runs about 25 bucks a bottle. And say the yield of that barrel is somewhere between 150 to 200. In 50. So let's just call it 200 for math's sake. Math. Um, so that would be about $5,000 if we're doing it that way. So the actual cost will vary, but that's not so bad. Yeah. So say you do the same amount of bottles with Bland's. Bland's is a $60 bottle. Ooh. So we're talking upwards of $12,000. Again, these are all hypothetical, but you can see how it can get expensive really quick. Yeah. The things that can influence how many bottles you get out of it, of course, the fill level of mm -hmm. the barrel, how much it's lost to the angel share, that's evaporation, and also what proof they cut it down to. Cut it down to 80 proof, you're going to get more bottles. Comes out cast strength, you're going to get less, less bottles. So it, uh, it all depends. So you want to do a barrel pick. Congratulations. Who doesn't? Yes. <laughs> but it's not as simple as having the thousands of dollars to get started. You need to have someone like a store or a bar involved, someone that has a license. Right, because they're also connected with a distributor, which makes it legal because a distillery can't just sell you a barrel. That is not legit. Um, so how do you get the hookup? Um, we would recommend starting with a bourbon society. Mm. Um, actually being members of the Lexington Bourbon Society is the reason why we get to go on the majority of the barrel picks that we've gotten to go on. That's how we started. It yeah. is. And you know, bars or stores like to tap into their local bourbon society or other bourbon societies right. because uh, a lot of them can actually get a good reputation of, of picking good picks and bourbon societies are normally filled with what? Knowledgeable sure. bourbon nuts <laughs> right. who, who want to go and then plus you're plugged into that community mm -hmm. so you already have this hype for selling those bottles. Yep, they're going to market those bottles for you. Yeah, exactly. So let's look at some footage from some Lexington Bourbon Society barrel picks. We're tasting at Four Roses uh, in Cox Creek. We've had six barrels rolled out. We have narrowed it to four, and now we're going to narrow it to two. That's more whiskey than your head right now. Look at that. you just walk into a warehouse and start pointing at barrels that you want to try and have them bring them down for you? Uh, that would take way too long. So yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. It doesn't, it doesn't really work out that way. It's uh, kind of already curated for you. So let's hear what Eddie Russell, Master Stiller of Wild Turkey, had to say about picking the barrels that you get to pick. So doing single barrel picks has really been great for me. I love how different it can taste with using the same recipe, the same yeast. So what I do is I'll go through about 5,000 barrels and pick out about 450 that I think are very unique. There'll be some that'll taste like wild turkey, some that'll be my taste profile, 
a little creamier. There'll be ones that are real spicy and bold. So it's just fun. You get cherry bombs sometimes, you get butterscotch sometimes. So it's just picking different taste profiles so people that pick a barrel can have one that they like the best. So what do you look for when you're doing a barrel pick? I mean, it really varies on the bar or the restaurant or the store. Uh, some people like to pick within the taste profile of that particular bourbon. Some people like to pick really funky off the wall stuff. Um, I prefer somewhere <laughs> in the middle, somewhere that's yeah. true to the original taste profile, but unique enough to make a difference. In the same ballpark, right? Right. Uh, so say like you're picking a bottle of Buffalo Trace, you want it to taste like the best bottle of Buffalo Trace you've ever tasted, not like some functified, like what is this doing in a bottle that says Buffalo Trace on it? Exactly. You never you know? want to be like, this Buffalo Trace tastes like dirt. So what to expect on the day? Well. This will happen during the week, uh, late morning to early afternoon. So a vacation day is probably in your future. Some groups will take like a bus, like a party mm -hmm. bus up there. Right. Which is recommended because driving after drinking all that whiskey, not recommended. Not recommended. It's mm -hmm. usually about 10 people, sometimes a little bit less, sometimes a little bit more. Personally, I prefer a smaller group because it's easier to sway them uh -huh. in my direction. <laughs> but sometimes you get a group of 12 or so. And it moves um, faster. And it moves, it moves pretty quickly. Yeah. So. yeah. You arrive at the distillery knowing what you're going after. So you're picking a bottle of Buffalo Trace. You're picking a bottle of Old Forester. You're picking a bottle of uh, Elijah Craig instead of Henry McKenna right. or uh, Eagle Rare or, or Blanton's. Sure, there's no surprises. When yeah. you show up, you already you know, know. You know what you're picking. And, right. and like Eddie talked about, the barrels are already curated. They're already rolled out. So someone asked, how do you weed out the good from the bad? Well, they're not really going to roll any bad out for you because, you know, what did Eddie say? Out of those uh, great number, he narrows it down to this much that, sure. that he wants people to taste and find that unique barrel. So you don't need to really worry about finding a, <laughs> a really bad one. But I guess it could happen because taste is subjective, right? Right. Yeah. The whole process takes about two to three hours with you only getting generally a small break in between the time you taste your original barrels and then you break those down into your favorites and they'll do them blind for you. So that time when they're setting up and re you know resetting, you kind of get to reset your palate and sometimes you go on a tour, but generally you get a tour before. Mm -hmm. um, there's always that little period of time though where you can just kind of take a step back and contemplate your selection. Yeah, but well, that's really about the only time. Mm -hmm. I, I think a lot of people might think, oh, this is an all day process especially if you're tasting like seven to ten barrels and this is thousands of dollars on the line of course you would take all day well no it's no a, it's a business it's pretty quick and they normally do a couple of these a day so you gotta move on it's lunchtime <laughs> and we have another one going I mean it's a it's a business yeah they're hospitable but they're also like all right you guys to go <laughs> yeah all right you need to pick one now you're just drinking so as you're going from barrel to barrel how can you kind of reset the palate? Well, some places will provide crackers, mm -hmm. uh, chips, right. uh, you know, um, things like that. Other places won't. Now, most of them won't mind if you bring a bag in. Yep, but they all will provide you with water. Yeah. So let's dive a little bit deeper into the process of actually choosing that barrel, because as we said, generally four to even 12 of those barrels are already rolled out for you to choose from. Well, first things first, somebody's got to open up that barrel. And one of my favorite parts of going on picks is when they let you hammer the bung out of the barrel like this. Get a hot tonic! Get a move! Sometimes they pop out. It takes a minute. And yes, it's called a bung. And yes, you're hammering out of the bung hole. Let's move on, actual <laughs> terms. Uh, then Sarah, right. the next cool part. Is else? the whiskey thief. Yes. Which is basically like a giant cool copper straw. <laughs> so they thief the whiskey from inside the barrel at barrel proof and put it directly into your glass. Now you wanna talk about non-chill filtered, non this and that. There's nothing like tasting bourbon straight out of the barrel, straight out of a whiskey thief, and sometimes poured by the master distiller himself in a warehouse. Really, That's worth the price of a mission right there, folks. It really doesn't get any better than that. Nope. So at that point, once you've got everything in your glass, they've thiefed all of the barrels into all of your glasses mm. and everyone's tasting in your group and everyone's nosing and talking about notes and blah, blah, blah. Yes. This comes the fun part, the voting. What say ye, Carrot? Red, what say ye, Blue. 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 
Red. Red. Are y'all keeping up? Yep. Three to two. Blue. <laughs> because everyone has their own opinion. <laughs> and you know what they say about opinions. Yeah, <laughs> they do. They're just like barrels. Everyone's... No, they're just like barrels. Everyone has a bum. Everyone has a bum. <laughs> Let's hear some opinions from various picks. More tannins and more spice. Before we were getting more of a carrot cake, so let's see what it's like with the water. Now it's more almost like a chocolate cake. I'm oak forward, but I'm not a licorice guy, and I get that strongly. Who else got the licorice? I got licorice on, where am I? On number one. It's more what you think in a barrel pick with a bourbon. Three is. Two is like that we had last time where it's like that outlier. Sure. A rich Corinthian leather? Yeah. It's a lot of interesting stuff. But then what's it all come down to, Sarah? The voting. It comes down to the voting, yeah. So you have to put aside where the atmosphere and get down to what's in the glass and what everyone thinks about it. And you know, generally there is a stakeholder <laughs> in this scenario, someone who's got something to lose or the backer. Um, so you kind of have to, everyone puts in their opinion, but it really comes down to this person. So we can sway them all we want. Sometimes, yeah. I mean, I've been on picks where it's been very democratic the winning vote wins. Other ones, you can see that vote, but that person who's writing the check gets to make the decision. <laughs> but, but in either scenario, all votes are tallied, the top few are generally, you know, everyone shoot out of the room, the top few are then re-poured and rearranged for everyone to taste, to do it blind, which is the only fair way yes. to do it. He's, get, he's gonna bring it out blind, we're gonna do our top three blind. There's Eddie right there. Top four. Top four, top four. Uh, and then everyone comes back and tastes them, chooses a winner, and everyone goes about the business. <laughs> so then you get to put the bung back in the bung hole, mm -hmm. hammer that in, which uh, a lot of people take, uh, take a whack at. And then you tip up Ooh. the winning barrel like this. Right. And you sign the barrel head. That's one of my favorite parts. So you sign the barrel, and then that barrel a lot of times gets rolled onto a truck and then off to bottling. Um, off to be yeah. dumped. Dumped, yeah, <laughs> Go dumped. live on the farm, I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> he goes upstate and lives on a farm. And in roughly one to two months, sometimes longer, depending on the distillery you're working with, yep. those barrels will come back to you as brand new bottles. Top three right hey. now. Hey, I'm glad you're yeah. getting groped in a warehouse. Two, so one of the biggest questions we get asked about barrel picks is what is different from distillery to distillery? So we decided to do a pro and con list starting with Wild Turkey Distillery. Now we were there to pick a bottle of Russell's Reserve. Pro, you get to go on the pick with the master distiller himself, Eddie Russell. And on all the picks we've been on so far, this is the only time that we've had the opportunity to pick with a master distiller. That's a big pro. Very cool. Second pro is you get to walk through the warehouse. You're just walking down the warehouse, rolling up to barrels, he thieves it out for you, pours it in your glass, again, from the master distiller. It's like just the best environment to taste whiskey ever. Big pro, big, big pro. pro. Um, so minor cons, yeah. there are there is no food provided, although you can bring your own food. We brought pretzels. Mm -hmm. um, also, you only get one glass to sample from. So if you know ahead of time, you can bring your own glassware. If you don't know, you're stuck between this decision of finishing each pour or pouring it out, which is heartbreaking. No, this this hurts me. Oh, no. This hurts me. So if you can't keep the previous pour in a glass, how can you? How can, how you, can, go, you, how be, can you A B test, right? Right. How can you A B test yeah. against the next one and the next one? Now Eddie would say at that point you're just drinking. Right, right, right. But some people like to go back and try their favorites against their favorites, which you can do in the blind later, but it's always yeah. hard to remember. And you just end up a little confused. Now I can already hear people saying, "There's no way I would pour out straight from the." straight from the barrel, Russell's Reserve. Well, you have to think about the collective, the greater good. Greater good. If you drink all that whiskey, you're gonna impair yourself, you're gonna impair your judgment. You're drunk. <laughs> you're drunk and you're not gonna have your, your faculties about you. So think about that. I mean, it broke my heart to do it, but the greater good. You gotta think about the whole barrel instead of just the one taste. Right. So let's talk about Buffalo Trace. What was the hardest for you? Um, I would say the Buffalo Trace. Yeah, for sure. Uh, it was, we, I mean, we had nine barrels, nine barrels to pick from, I'm sorry. The pros about going there are that you can thieve straight from the barrel into a master glass, which is gonna give you your straight from the barrel proof. Um, but they'll also provide you a second glass behind that one that's got a 
that same bourbon proofed down closer to what it's going to be in the bottle. So you can compare the difference between the straight from the barrel and what you're probably going to get more closely to what you're actually going to have in your bottle. Sure, sure. Um, the other cool thing is that they provide you with plenty of room to write and that system allows you to A-B test and go back to things you previously tried, which is pretty cool. That's very cool, but that also leads into one of the cons. There's only one master glass. So yeah. again, you could bring some glasses, pour from that master glass into yours. Otherwise, you're going to be drinking after one another. Now, mm. the, the pick I was on it wasn't such a big deal. It was only three of us. But imagine getting like 10 people in there. That could There could be some backwash situations uh. in there. Um, the other little nitpicky con, con yeah, is that you are in the warehouse, but they fabricated this room. I think they did it to make it nicer, but it takes a little bit of the that ambiance. Magic away. Yeah. Yeah. Four Roses Pro. You are in a nice, well-lit, comfortable room with plenty of uh, space to write and, and take notes and mm -hmm. contemplate. And you may or may not be uh, there with the legendary Al Young. Of the two times I've done a Four Roses pick, I've had him once and I got to stand by him while he was doing doing it as well. That's that's pretty awesome. And there's chips. Yeah, chips are provided. I think they were... Uh, tortilla? Tortilla chips. Yes. But let's talk about some cons. Mm -hmm. So it's not at the distillery. It's actually at the Cox Creek bottling location, mm -hmm. which is fine. It's cool. You're in this room that's right off of the uh, dumping and filtering room. Um, you do get to take a small tour, but it's not in a warehouse. So you get to see some of what goes on behind the scenes, but it's. I don't feel that it was the full experience of behind the scenes, like some other distilleries. Right, right. Let's talk about Knob Creek. You get to do the tasting inside the warehouse. And on the times that we've been, we got to take our bottle home that day. You get to watch your bottle get filled. You can dip it in the wax and personalize it and literally label it and take it home with you when you leave. Yeah, plus you get lunch. That's true. You do get <laughs> lunch at on the Jim Beam grounds, which is amazing. It's barbecue. Yeah, it's barbecue. It's really good. Cons, you only have a few barrels. Like right. if I remember right, it was like three barrels because you have rocks glasses with colors on the bottom, like red, green, blue, you know, only three to choose from. Yeah, you know. But they're all generally delicious. So yeah, yeah. less options to choose from, but you can possibly take your bottle home that day. So yeah. give and take. Mm-hmm. Woodford Reserve. Now this is a little interesting because you can have a, uh, a tasting at the distillery or they can bring you the bottles. In, in some cases I've heard they can actually mail them to you. Now the one we did for our experience, we went to a store and they brought us these samples, which is cool because you can do it on your lunch break, which is how we did it. And we wouldn't be able to do it if we couldn't have done it on a lunch break instead of like taking a whole vacation day. Right, which is cool. But the downside to that is you don't get to go to the distillery and have the full experience. Um, you don't get, you get a limited number of bottles to choose from because you're based on what they bring you mm -hmm. and you don't get to thieve straight from the barrel. So it's already pre-packaged and presented to you. So you kind of miss out on that whole authentic experience of doing yeah. a barrel pick, but you can, there is the option to do it at the distillery. So if you were to do yeah. it, we would recommend you that. You just don't have that experience. No. Barton 1792. Pros. We got to do it in the warehouse with a senior brand executive uh, who poured, you know, he thieved straight from the barrel into four master Glencairn glasses from which all of us in the group poured into our individual glasses and got to taste, rank, he went back for more if we asked. So that was really cool. But the cons... Yeah, that kind of rolls into the con. Again, it's kind of a combination of Buffalo Trace and Wild Turkey. You only have your one glass, so either got to finish it all and again, risk getting inebriated or pour it out. We got a winner no matter what. Winner, winner, chicken, Russell Reserve dinner. Winner, winner, winner turkey dinner. Winner, winner, turkey oh. dinner. Oh. <laughs> so what have we learned from all this? Hmm. Well, there's no standard glass use between all the distilleries we've been to. That means there's no de facto, right? All you Glencairn fans, Ooh. <laughs> we're talking to you. No, I mean, whatever you like at home is up to you, but yeah. these master distillers, they choose what they want to choose. Uh, what, what else have we learned? You, you wish that you could take all day and time flies. This thing will go by before you know it. And you wish you could A, B test, blind test until you're down to the final two. But that's not going to happen because after all, this is a business and they need to move on with their day. Correct. Yeah. And on that note, you wish you could take some more time 
also so that you could sober up and your palate could sort of bounce back and you can taste those final two or three or four yeah. and really pick which one. But again, while they will be hospitable and donate their time and their knowledge to you, at some point they have a next appointment and you gotta go. Uh, but basically to wrap up, we recommend trying barrel picks. You know? Definitely. And you can find in your local area, you know, you can talk to some bourbon people and find a trusted store or bar as a source for good barrel picks. Uh, if you are interested in trying one, we recommend trying it there first. If you can get involved with your local bourbon society and get involved in a barrel pick, we highly recommend it. And if you are that baller who can invest several thousand dollars and split a barrel pick with a store or a bar or restaurant, um, it's a very cool experience that I don't think you will regret. So yeah. we highly recommend getting involved if you can. It's mm -hmm. an experience. It's like going to Disney World for, for bourbon drinkers. It's an amazing time and just cherish it. Cherish it and take notes because you're gonna yeah. wanna remember the age and the original proof and what was the mash bill and blah, blah, blah about each barrel that you try. So you're gonna wanna take diligent notes and just enjoy the time that you're there. Actually, that reminds me of something, Sarah. Uh, a lot of times people will say, don't tell me any information about the barrels. They want to taste them blind. No age, no where it was pulled from in the warehouse, none of that. All of that comes later. Like, okay, this is the one we picked, what is it? So real quick, I'll give you the age, even though most of you guys probably know what it is. This is a CO4J15, so this is October 15th of 2004. Just turned 12 years old Ooh. about a month ago. And that's part of like, the, oh, we picked the, the nine year and there was a 12 year in there, sure. or wh whatever it is. And that know? is a true blind experience. You just pick it because it's delicious and mm -hmm. it is your own. And that's how it should be. That's how it should be. Thanks for joining us guys on this journey. If you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button if you like what we're bringing to the barrel. Uh, you can also hit the bell notifications to know when we put out episodes or when we go live. That's right. Thank you to our patrons who sent us all the questions about this episode that we were able to elaborate on and give you more info. How can, we really how appreciate can they go to Patreon? What, what, how, how can they be one of those patrons? You can be a patron by going to patreon.com slash it's bourbon night huh. and then you can weigh in on things like this as well. That's right. Um, you can sign up for as little as $1 a month and support your very own Chad and Sarah. No. Um, Hello. <laughs> yeah. So just check those out. Also, we've been talking about glasses. Go to our Amazon influencer page, amazon.com slash shop slash it's bourbonite for some of our favorite glasses. And then lastly, social medias. All the social media channels at it's bourbonite. Boom. You can see what we're posting. There you go. All right. Well, thanks, Sarah. Thanks, Chad. Okay. And until next time, drink more single barrel picked bourbon. Yeah, it can go by many names, but how can you? Is that the next thing? How can you? How can you tell?